Thanks, Boris. Okay. okay. Thanks, thanks for inviting us, um, all of you. Uh, we will skip the intro then. Boris did a pretty much say already that the main one of our main things. We, we do typefaces and we have, uh, I like to say, a virtual studio. Um, Jose, 5,000 kilometers away, me moving more around more like as well. Like 15 probably, but... Uh, Doesn't matter. And we have several collaborators who, who are sit also in, in different different places. And um, t today um, we are going to discuss about these these three issues: this uh, making of type, typesetting, and printing. And um, we want to begin by telling you that these three things in the beginning of printing were done in the same office. I'm many times by the same per by the same person, and um, so the whole thing was conceived as a process that is uh, that it, it, it is held together by the making of type, putting it on the form, putting some ink on it, and printing. Type is very much linked to to, the, to its medium. Yeah, it's very much linked to the industry of the tech and the technology technological developments. So now with new medias, of course, um, things are changing, posing also new demands on us as designers. Uh, I'm talking mainly over new media and digital media. And uh, we, we have to think of print and digital these days. It's unthinkable to just stick to, to print. Um, so here, just a little little step back into print. Um, this is based on Jose's research in Reading. Basically, this is the same letter. This is Minion printed in nine points um, on different papers and with different presses and at different speeds. And um, as you can see, there are not two of them that look the same. Uh, for instance, the, the left one is printed on a very low quality paper with lots of, uh, of ink and good pressure and the right hand side is, uh, on a, is printed on a better paper. So the difference is really astonishing. It's, they look like different typefaces. So there's, there's, there's this conceptual difference that um, of what we build is not really what uh, is then seen and that's um, certainly true for digital as well. Um, th th this this book that some some of you might know uh, by uh, a guy called um, Harry Carter, um, and he says that type is something that we can hold in one hand. When we put that on a form, we put ink on it, and we press the paper. What we get is a typeface. That is, the printing is a typeface. So basically, uh, when we design typefaces, we do so. Um, with um, our mind and our eyes um, put into the actual process of reproduction, of printing, or in this case, uh, yeah, digital, rendering. Digital, it's exactly rendering. So how is the type actually rendered on these different digital media? You might think it's, it's quite coherent, but the, the reality is not. Uh, however, with... Um, so in editorial design now, its um, type is kind of bridging a bit this this um, question of, of brand, of coherence. Because you have to imagine that, of course, um, you are not stuck with one particular format anymore. You have little device, bigger one, really big one, and, and different um, uh, media from print to, to the digital. So type here really m helps uh, to, to bridge to visualize um, your Yes, and to keep co uh, a coherent uh, identity. I mean, what we are going to talk today, um, well, you have this, um, uh, this sample of uh, the same typeface in, yeah. in different browsers, and you can see that the same thing that we were seeing with the printing happens on the screen, okay? Um, so whenever you have to choose uh, a typeface, uh, our advice is to work with these two planes, uh, to see how much money you have, of course, because otherwise. Um, uh, to see what you need the font for, that uh, you have all of the characters that you actually need there. Um, the technology, how is this going to be reproduced, and whether the, the type shape 
will fit that reproduction. And finally, after you consider all of that, you can think if it is pretty or not. So these four elements, they come together in particularly complex, in complex um, uh, applications like, let's say, a newspaper. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, actually typefaces for such a complex piece like, like a type um, newspaper. And um, <clears throat> so if we look mainly at uh, text, text faces, uh, one of the most common ones is a uh, news face, is so-called uh, Scotch Roman. Uh, we, we had a whole kind of historical background here, but after hearing that we have only 35 minutes, we basically skipped that. Uh, so we sort of fast forward uh, so several hundreds uh, of years. That was good luck for <laughs> them, actually. I think yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Anyway, um, you need to... So if you choose type, if you design uh, a piece like that, uh, a, a newspaper, uh, you have these different levels. So for your, for your main text and some headlines and then later on what we call multipurpose. We're going to go over that a bit more. But if you... Um, so for, for, the, for the text, uh, the, the small, you know, the, the actual content, uh, here you m should consider a few parameters. Like, um, you don't want to give um, an extra content on top of that content. So the typeface should not be really that personal. It should sort of be the crystal goblet, um, like um, Beatrice Ward might, might know, some of you. Uh, transparent and at the same time kind of reassuring the reader that uh, they actually believe um, what you are, what, what, uh, you are reading. <laughs> and um, th that is a subject for a different discussion yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's not go into politics too much. <laughs> but um, one of the things with newspapers is that one of the goals is trying to fit as many characters as you can in one line of text and as many lines in the depth of a column. For this is that the Scotch Romans um, are particularly good. So what we're going to show you is our own take on the Scotch Roman. Um, this is a Thai family called Abril. The top one is our design. Um, the other two are Nimrum and uh, Utopia or Utopia, which are arguably um, two of the most successful um, uh, newspaper fonts out there. Um, it is kind of a very uh, oh, a steady looking uh, tie face and um well, one of the features is the low contrast so um between the thicks and the thins i don't know how m how much you are aware of the typographic terminology so if you know don't understand yeah. just shout in so contrast show hands contrast yes oh okay oh, we're okay. fine we're bad. perfectly fine okay. <laughs> so right. So this is, this is for text. This is a small size, nine points, okay? And this is going to be printed really, really fast. And with Therefore, a lot of ink. quite uh, often, really low, low uh, quality print. Yeah. So you get a lot of ink spread. Yeah, the, the paper is just a, a bit better than toilet paper, let's say. Yeah, quite often. Although it's getting better. It depends. It depends, oh. yeah. The Polish, they didn't have it uh, that right yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> so anyway, it, uh, it started, uh, actually the, the whole family started as an idea to, um, I wanted to do a kind of a Didonesque inspired typeface. And um, so we went a bit reverse directions from, from the display and uh, ended up doing a text. Anyway, this is the, um, yes, the uh, display just face. Um, let me point out something here. Um, if I, c yeah. Do you have the italics? Yeah. Yes. This is, uh, again, the dot abodoni. Yeah. I don't even see it. Oh, uh, right, there it is. The angle is really, really steep. That is the classical way of doing uh, modern romans or the dons. And from our point of view, this doesn't work for a newspaper. So our take is much more uh, vertical. And we also switched uh, for a um, one story uh, lowercase g, if you can see here, okay, uh, which is the really relates kind of to the d dot, to yeah, the original d dot. It's anyway. inspired by the original one. Um, and here, just to show you a little bit of a comparison between the two. So you have in the background the, the display, 
and in the foreground on the black outline, the text version. So you see you have to, um, as a designer, adapt to the kind of functionality of this face. So you, you might recognize that the serifs and the display and the, and the gray one are much thinner. Um, they're actually straight along the X height and we, we changed the G because this open G was a little bit too, too disturbing in, in the flow of text. Uh, and also little things like the, like the connection on the K. It, um, in, uh, in the text, it's, it will connect just due to ink spread, but on a display it can be blown up and can be, can be nicely connected. Um, so here, just a little example of uh, of them together. You know that we need to hurry up, like badly. Yeah, we need to hurry up. Yeah. Okay, okay, let's hurry up. Um, here you see, <laughs> this is a just um, we we decided we'll do quite a big uh, big range of styles, and at some point uh, I didn't think we were fat enough, so. I made uh, a black version and then we kind of started to play around and had a lot of fun designing all sorts of playful stuff and totally unnecessary stuff and <laughs> probably nobody ever is going to use it, but uh, we just, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, just kind instance, of play around. You, you do have a whole set of numbers yeah. that are different for oh, no and reason. And this. We we didn't the, the office. That's completely wrong. That's that's just not a working ligature there. I don't okay, think. that that is that's my bad. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that's Jose's. Yeah, um, uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Paul. The they no, they the didn't the discover that until you pointed it out. No, actually, no, no, you know that, that right? <laughs> no, it's just a slide. In the in the in the actual typeface, it works. Uh, it was just he didn't switch on the the open type features. Sorry, we we Anything like to else tease you want each to other. Share? No, 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 no. We we need to hurry up. Fine. So. Here you can see um, them uh, working together. This was uh, for a whole, was it the Johnston Press? Uh, a yeah, whole, so whole a set of, bunch um, of um, newspapers. English newspapers. Uh, this one, is, uh, was it the Argentinian? No, no, no that no. is uh, from Miami, oh, yeah, uh, Spanish, uh, Diario de las Americas. So it's, it's nice to see, you know, when, when your typeface is actually used in the way you sort of intended. Um, but we also had had uh, occasions where the text has been blown up to, to uh, display, or on the other hand, uh, the black being kind of scaled down, but wasn't too bad. Uh, and since um, you know we we were talking about digital media, it is something that is nowadays as a type designer, it is in your in your mind, so you have to consider that. And with Abril, that was one of our first um, faces that we hinted, so-called. I'm not expecting you to know what it is. Just briefly said, it's, uh, let's say, an optimization for the web. So you can uh, actually set the, the type won't wiggle up and down and the stems won't change in, in pixel size. It, it is a post-production process that yeah. is done to the font so they will look fine I on mean, the here on that looks obviously shit, but doesn't... I mean, this is just. Well, it uh, could be worse. Come on, yes. This is just. Uh, so you have to go to the website. When we finish this, we we said, okay, we need a sans serif that actually works together with Abril. Okay, Abril yeah. was a, a large family already. And but um, we didn't want to do like just a cut off serif uh, serif sans, um, but more of a companion. And so we thought, okay, it was quite clear. We we'll go into the. Um, sort of same time period, uh, the 19th century, for inspiration. So here you see um, some, some of these examples. Yeah, so these are interesting to see because the first three are really like um, digital takes on, on the earlier sans serifs, the early grotesque sans serif. Whereas uh, in the last one we have, of course, Helvetica. That looks a bit too clinical and, and yeah, just too, too nice and too sterile. And so th that was too much for us. Yeah, we wanted to keep the, that little bit of quirkiness uh, because it was clearly going to be a phase for titling. And if I may I add something, the so-called neutrality in tie phases is way overrated from my point of view at least. Okay, so... 
Um, just a little story. Uh, we were at a workshop in Poland and uh, they took us to some print shop and there we saw these specimens and that was way before we even had a brill and whatever. And Jose, he took uh, this picture and then we were kind of thinking about, okay, where shall we start with this, uh, with this new sauce? He got that out and we really liked that number two. There was something about it um, that seemed like a good, good starting point. So we indeed started with a number two. I mean, we changed a bit. We didn't, you know, the terminal is kind of has, has this little yeah, quirk like kind of and so on. Yeah, pursued the same kind of narrowness and uh, typographic and color. And um, with so from that number two, we we designed 84 faces. Um, it wasn't overnight. I mean, no, it no, it, it, it took a bit. I think it took about a year. Um, and but the idea here was was we called it tablet, tablet Gothic. Um, that was back in 2012 or so, yes. where um, you know the whole kind of tablet boom all of a sudden started. Not all of a sudden, but it started. And so we thought, okay, this needs to be um, taken into consideration. So therefore, we we decide to do these different levels of condensation. So when you uh, when we were talking before about these different um, devices. devices, screens. So a family like this gives you the opportunity to um, switch, but not the whole family, um, but within the same style, just go more condensed or go wider, depending on your responsive design, the, the inward. Although I heard there's something yes. else now. Okay. But uh, it, it is nice mm. to see how, uh, how it sits next to Abril. Um, yeah, here's the comparisons we have. I mean, there are two independent designs, but they have a few features that will actually fit. You can also see from, from the width, is from the proportions, it's quite similar. It has this very vertical axis. Uh, yeah, the width, very similar. And kind of... Not directly the same features, but you know, kind of going in that in that direction. So this is just uh, perhaps important for when you when you choose typefaces to you as a designer to look for certain features. Yes, like basically that. combining typefaces, which is a different lecture. We'll different not lecture. go into that today, okay? But um, co in combining typefaces, uh, you have two ways, and you have to choose very well which one either you can find some consistency and try to be consistent in the look and feel, or you can choose for the contrast, but do not stay in the middle because it will look like an error. And you wanted this slide? Uh, yes, I want to point out uh, just that since this typeface is for titles, there are a few issues that are important. For instance, very small descender, very tall x sky, and Usually, what you want to have, especially for newspapers, of course, is to have the capital height the same as the ascender and the same as the number. So your titles will sit n nice and tight in lines, okay? So here, just to show you, <coughs> and we like to add little little features like the per, per thousand sign, you know, some little things that, again, probably nobody is really going to use, but it's for our own pleasure, if you want. We kind of... Um, yeah, we like drawing type. Mas mas masochistic pleasures. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a combination of actually a brill in the text and, um, and tablet. And, and this is one of my favorite titles ever, yeah. The Superhero Boy. Uh, I mean, um, yes, it is. Um, yeah, I, I know. Take a look at the uppercase I in the livers. Why is that? Why, why, why do, does that one have serifs? Because otherwise you would confuse it with the lowercase L because they have the same height. But at the same time, I think it works Pretty well in upper cases. Yeah, um, unfortunately, so the whole other kind of boulevard um, press loves tablet gothic. Yeah, so if, if you like tabloids, you will see it a lot, yeah. probably. <laughs> and um, okay, yeah, and we talk about text yeah, and titles. Okay, so we talk, but then there is a lot in in a newspaper that sort of goes. 
unnoticed perhaps, but uh, we call it multi multi bleh, multiple, multiple purpose. purpose. Uh, or it's also called accent font, um, like for little be bits and pieces like that, as you see in those ranks, like footnotes. So and usually in, and this, and in these families, this, these families that will fill in for these small bits and pieces, we need a, a very, very large type family that can print both large and small, and that has a bit more personality. It can add a bit more to the newspaper in this case. And it has some correlation with uh, the, the, the rest of the typographic palette, yeah, of so whatever you chose for the, um, for the text and the title. Um, we are showing the, the Adele family mainly because um, it relates to another project which we want to talk in a bit more detail. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of our take a little bit on a so-called Egyptian or slab serif, uh, working in a big range range of styles. And a couple of years later, we did a sans, but again, not so much the cut-off serif version, but more of a companion. However, uh, we did decide here to keep the same, um, more or less the same proportions, be uh, cup height, excite, and then and the color, coloring of it as well. And like Jose was saying, you <coughs> for these accent fonts, it's, it's great to have different levels of condensation. So therefore, we started with the condensed. Um, the sans, we are still working. It's a beta, yeah? So therefore, you don't see italics there. Um, yes, and I can say that the uprights don't look that great yet. Welcome. Well, come on. Blame, blame the projector. It, it is the projector, don't worry. So, um, uh, again, with, with Adele, uh, we kind of like, like to do a few, few bits that um, perhaps in, the, in this case, um, ligatures like CK, in a normal slab, you don't really see that. Uh, we also decided here to go for so-called um, open, not open, um, old style numbers as a default. And uh, was there something else you wanted to say here? Yeah, well, no, it's, it, it is good for titles, as we see. Uh, well, this was really a, a big screw-up, because after two years of working on this, we released a tie phase, and a week later, uh, I'm, I'm talking to Vic, and I say, Vic, you know what? I have a bad news. I don't like the numbers. So without telling anything to anyone, we went back to a drawing board, thing that we tried to never do, um, and we changed the numbers again, and we changed the height so they would fit a bit more nicely with the, touch, uh, with the upper cases. Too low before. Anyway, here this is a little comparison between the two, um, just to show you um, the, the relationship of it. Um, okay. Well, we have we're plenty good. of time. We're, we're, we're back good. on track. Good. Okay, good. that's good. Excellent. That's good. Um, all right, you want to jump to Clarine? Um, yes. Um, all of this was to basically show a project that is a um, tailor-made uh, design. That is, since the needs for newspapers are so specific and, and, and um, uh, are so uh, hard to meet, uh, it's quite often that they actually hire a type designer to build a specific typeface. Um, this is uh, the um, the Clarín yeah. newspaper. is uh, the largest newspaper in in Argentina. This is uh, the cover uh, the day after the moon landing. Okay, and um, this is so 69. Uh, well, let's jump to 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 the upper cases then. But it's quite interesting to see also the the logo. You see, Clarín is kind the, of the, hidden. The logo the logo is is hidden here. Right so there. not not the masthead that um, that came much later. This is uh, the military coup in seventy six. Right, and this is again the title is all upper cases, okay, and um, as you can see there is it's a, bi a bit of a mess, but uh, they will continue with this style of upper case titling for many many years. This is back to democracy in eighty three. You can see a bit more more of structure here with that column on the on the right, and the the logo moved to the top of it. Okay, um, this is the day 
Argentina won the World Cup in '86. Um, so yeah, football is a is a big thing. Yeah. Um, this is 1991. We take a look at that typeface in the title. That is something that they actually mechanically compressed, and it looks like really, one, really one bad. of the sins of um, typography. Yeah. Yes, yes, of the many sins of, of the typography. Many sins. Um, so yes, I mean. It is early digital, but you can see a lot of these things that are really not working. Uh, of course, I, I think the design by these days was really like uh, done more um, uh, intuitive uh, design, let's say. Yeah. It, it, it wasn't like a here they switched to uh, to lower cases. Uh, it was in '94. This one. This is this is pretty recent. It's 1994. It's just 20 well, years ago. Yeah. And voila, we have color. Um, and some really dodgy. I, I don't want to know which typeface <laughs> that is, okay? I, I just don't want to know. And on top, what also a lot of uh, editors love the kind of minus tracking, you know, let, let, let the uh, letters collide, please. Yeah, let, just let them. Definitely not working. And. <coughs> We will jump to the first real um, kind of attempt to a real design. This is uh, done by um, Cases y Associates from Barcelona. 97. 97. Yeah. 97 or 99? 97. Yeah. Um, to begin with, we have frankly gothic in the titles, which you might like it more or less, but it's a font that will work. Okay? And um, more use of color, better printing. Um, and much more structure in terms of uh, giving the news uh, um, a priority for the, for the reader and so on. Um, this is six years, so in between they were kind of um, using Franklin continued. Right. With that. right. They were very, very happy with Franklin Gothic. Okay. Um, 2007, was that? Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is the introduction they changed. Um, Again, the same um, consultant, Cases y Associates, they changed the design and they went for Whitney. Um, Whitney is, um, I mean, arguably the style fits the newspaper, mm. but. Um, has some issues, with if you look at the cups, they are a bit too heavy, and in, in Spanish, there, there are lo there's a high repetition rate of uh, A, of the letter A. And it kind of feels just way, way overwhelming. Um, it's too, just too wide. Seems I mean, too wide. From my point of view, but uh, um, so the actual art directors at the newspaper weren't really that blown away with this uh, design or with this typeface. Not the design, but the typeface. Uh, yet they they kept it for many, many years. And this is. Um, when uh, I was first uh, contacted by them, just for being in Argentina, I'm guessing, um, and they bought a few, st a few of uh, um, uh, Adele's, so the, the one that so we the showed one you before, the, yeah, the multiple purpose, mm. and they started using very shyly. Here, yeah. it's a font that was working very well in the sports supplement. It was, it was performing well, and it started to gain space. Okay. So here you can see it. That the new cover, this is just two 2013, so in just a year, the typeface was getting more use into the paper. It was, yeah, and it was really a, a, a good part of the look and feel of the paper because it is this accent font. It is the font that uh, you will use to put some color, to put some big numbers, to put some um, some some more uh, uh, eye-catching stuff in there. Um, this is the day. Argentina lost the final to Germany. You can um, see um, that Jose is a football fan. So, <laughs> it was well, but in all honesty, if I show Maradona with the cup, <laughs> I had to show this one as well. Uh, yeah, we were not happy, I have to say. Um, okay. So, when I heard that uh, they were they were trying to um, to change the, the the font for titling. Okay. Now. Now. Oh, now push we forward. hurry up. Okay, the phone for titling. My first intention was to push 
Adele furthermore. So I say, okay, let's switch to Adele Sons. Uh, the bottom. Which is the one at the bottom. The top one is Whitney. Okay. There are many reasons. We cannot really stop into details. But... Uh, it didn't feel right. It didn't work for, for it. It didn't work. The color wasn't right. The width mostly wasn't right. And the style was a bit I just too personal, probably. True. Yeah. Um, so, a couple of months later, out of nothing, I get this sample with Meta Serif on the title. Okay, that's it. And, um, but and they yeah. started uh, to use Adele songs. If you look um, the the sub sub headline, that was uh, Adele songs. So they right, did, but um, but there were a, a few things that um, that Meta were w was not doing right here. Um, the G, the lowercase G, was sticking out quite a bit. And, um, and they, f they also felt there's a bit some unevenness along the X side, a bit too much, um, um, too much for for titles, and it was clashing uh, with Adele, which by that time it really had gained its presence. So they did not feel so like they need to what reintroduce we're trying to something say else. Is there. that these two down here? They they, sh they they were not working together. They were competing. They were the same kind of font. Okay. Like so we, were, we were saying before, that it's important to have some kind of correlation, some, some relationship between the text title and, and multipurpose. So they came up uh, with the sort of brief for us. It was decided it's after... A bit generic, I would say. Yeah, okay. I mean, it, it should feel newsy. And you would expect that in a newspaper font, don't you? I mean sure, sure. But after a lot of discussions and a lot of emails, a lot of convincing and so on and so on. Um, we kind of came came to this uh, brief and started started um, introducing a sort of a titling font based on on Adele. So those three uh, just variations, first kind of ideas, sketches. Yes, I, I, wa I want to point out two, two or three details here. From the Adele at the top, you can see the different letter A's, which is the one of the main characters because of the repetition rate, we already said that. Look at the E changing, look at the serif, double serif here instead of one serif here, there, and higher contrast as you can see in the B. Okay? They chose, um, they chose well, this that one. one. And um, so also they, they were going to change the logo, uh, Clarine. So we started. Um, setting yeah basically this is just the font um converted in typing the word clarin in upper and lower case and th i think when they got back to me they they, they used the word vulgar oh yeah yeah i think so yeah. I mean, they didn't like it it was just too fat it didn't feel right yeah they felt it was a bit too heavy and, and they, they didn't like this r yeah the r yeah. with uh, the axe so okay so we changed the r and made it a bit thinner send it back and we really did not like this R uh, we didn't think it was working for for the um, uh, for the logo and this is the problem so right here uh, is that white ocean that you get below the R okay, so that we disregarded really any kind of client request and um, Jose put his convincing hat on and uh, <laughs> in Spanish you know like Proper I, I can be pretty convincing, yeah. Serious uh, fights. Um, well, and this is uh, in the end what became the Clarín Titulos, um, a two weight uh, family. Yes, 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 we are almost done. Um, here you can see just a little, little comparison uh, between the Adele de Sens and the Titulos. So this, this was the, the palette they, they ended up with. Uh, here, this is the lighter version. This yes. one. Yeah, just to show a, a few things. I mean, um, this ligature was made because in Spanish uh, it's quite frequent. So these kind of things you can do when you work for a specific newspaper. And also the, the numbers are lining by default because it is um, supposed to be a titling uh, phase. And here, just a little comparison between the old logo, the new one, and uh, a version for the web. So you want to, um, 
to just show yeah, just briefly. To, just to, 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 to tackle on this. This logo that you're seeing here is not the font. Uh, uh, when you take a typeface out of the box and you type the, the word, the brand, you don't get a logo, okay? The logo is 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 different. The, you can see the flat top serves here. This connection here was done differently. The spacing changed to make the the, the the thing hold together better. Okay, this is lettering. This is not typography. And so here you can see how it's being used now. <coughs> and we are actually planning. We are really happy with it. And it's not. Uh, it's only exclusive for what, like two years yeah, or something. Yeah, I think this is will be expanded. So we are we are planning to expand. So um, to finish, um, we'd like to come back to the issue of the many um, yeah. the many uh, platforms because the website looks like this, and it has been redesigned apparently. Okay, uh, and and even worse, uh, I want to point out the the mobile site, which for some freaking reason, oh. okay, we don't have anything to do with this. It's 35 minutes. It's 35 minutes, like really? total cut off. Really? Hey, we are the only ones. Everybody else was overdoing. <laughs> one minute, okay? Yeah, yeah, but, but we're, okay. we're, yes, we're yes, yes, yes. Do, 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 do. <laughs> I mean, for real. <laughs> That's unfair. Take a look. <laughs> now, seriously, now, forget about that. <laughs> Take a look at that little frame that they decided to put around the news. I mean, what were they thinking? This is totally the wrong way to do this. Yeah, I mean, why do you need this little frame? This you already uh, have totally pointless. Uh, uh, just a little, very precious space in something like this, and you will screw it up with a frame. You don't need a frame, okay? And on top of that, this is the typographic palette. Guess what? Clarin Titulos, the one that they requested, is not there. Not even Adele is on there. Like, like none, none of the ones that they're actually using. And, and so print. our... Our final thing is that we need to talk to each other. And besides getting these three guys, the type maker, the typesetter, and the printer work together, we now, decide, uh, we now need another, another guy, and that is the programmer. Okay? So the bottom line is, um, yeah, let's try to communicate a bit more. Yeah. Can we leave you with a little, just a one minute, half? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.